Today the church venerates the uh, memory of St. Monica, one of the extraordinary um, saints in the communion of saints. She lived in the third century, and very devoted Christian. Uh, she married a Roman a civil servant and um, I guess in 21st century language, we would say they were in a very abusive relationship. And she prayed and prayed for his conversion and that he would uh, change his ways. And eventually her prayers were answered. Her husband uh, converted to Christianity and uh, became a, a loving husband, and uh, which brought great joy to her. That joy was uh, sort of short-lived because she had a son, her oldest son, Augustine, whose life was guided by the principles of wine, women, and wonder. Uh, he had a torturous uh, adolescence and early adulthood, and she prayed and prayed for him. Uh, she knew he was troubled. He was hanging around with the wrong crowd. He was on the way to disaster. And again, God answers her prayers, her tears. Augustine converts to Christianity, eventually becomes a priest, eventually ordained a bishop, eventually became a father of the church, for he was a tremendous scholar. She's buried in Rome in this glorious church named after her son, the Church of St. Augustine, just off the Piazza Navono. The, Many people walk by the church and don't even realize what the church is about, but it's a glorious church with paintings by Caravaggio and Raphael. The altar was uh, designed by Bernini. It's a spectacular church. And in this church is the great shrine of Madonna del Parto, Our Lady of Childbirth. It's quite a custom for pregnant moms at some point in their pregnancy to light a candle at that shrine for the safe delivery of their child. It's also a place where moms that are having troubled pregnancies go, a place of enormous comfort. St. Monica is the patron saint of troubled marriages, troubled families, the patron saint of those struggling with addictions. She's really a saint of the 21st century in my mind uh, because there's troubled waters in all of our lives in certain places and she stands as a great example of prayer of petition to never take for granted how important it is to present to the Lord the prayers that speak to our struggles, our suffering, our pain. Monica hang, hung in there through the turbulent waters in her life and has become a tremendous sense of strength uh, to those who are uh, dealing with life's difficulties and challenges. Her legacy is often overshadowed by the accomplishments of her son, but the more I study her life, read about her life, the more she speaks to such human realities. You know, we all have things that keep us up at night that worry us. She's a special inspiration to moms worried about their kids. Your kids are never too old, right? <laughs> that you don't worry about them. And she was someone who just kept bringing through the Lord uh, the troubled and concerns and the pains of her life. And she was blessed to see God working in the lives of those who she was praying for. So today, this gospel speaks about how important our interior life is, how we have to keep growing spiritually. And I can't think of a better saint to represent the gospel today than Monica, who calls us to the power of prayer and the possibilities that exist as God listens to us, sometimes not answering prayers exactly how we would like them to be answered, but nonetheless answering them and walking with us in our journey of faith. Thank you for participating in this production of our virtual mass. Your presence means so much. Every day, so many parishioners connect to OLPH through the digital ministry. The digital ministry is one of almost 80 ministries supported by the parish. That's why your support of the parish is crucial, so we can continue to have the resources to fund all of our ministries that touch the lives of many. 
thank you for watching. Continue to watch, and thanks again for your support.